In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to bless you. You'll become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. And then the angel left. At that time, the Roman Emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was obviously pregnant by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior. Yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others 
the armies of heaven, praising God. the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them, and because they had seen the child just as the angels had said. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John didn't want to baptize him. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. So why are you coming to me? It must be done, because we must do everything that is right. So then, John baptized him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, and I am fully pleased with him. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched closely to see whether Jesus would heal the man on the Sabbath. Because they were eager to find some legal charge to bring against him. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand here where everyone can see. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Is it legal to do good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing harm? Is this a day to save life? Or to destroy it? He looked around at them. One by one and then said to the man, Reach out your hand. The man reached out his hand, and it became normal again. At this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage. 
and began to discuss what to do with him. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the land of the Gerasenes. Just as Jesus was climbing from the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit ran out from a cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the tombs and could not be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to control him. All day long and throughout the night, he would wander among the tombs and in the hills, screaming and hitting himself with stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him. He ran to meet Jesus and fell down before him. Come out of the man, you evil spirit. He gave a terrible scream, shrieking. Why are you bothering me, Jesus, son of the most high God? For God's sake, don't torture me. What is your name? Legion, because there are many of us here inside this man. Then the spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the evil spirits begged. Jesus gave them permission. So the evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake where they were drowned. The herdsmen fled to the nearby city and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. Everyone rushed out to see for themselves. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, but they were frightened when they saw the man who had been demon-possessed. For he was sitting there, fully clothed and perfectly sane. Those who had seen what happened to the man and to the pigs told everyone about it. And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. When Jesus got back into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go too. But Jesus said, No, go home to your friends and tell them what wonderful things the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to tell everyone about the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Teacher, why was this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. He was born blind, so the power of God 
could be seen in him. All of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent me, because there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. But while I am still here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smoothed the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means saint. So the man went and washed. And came back seeing. Then they took the man to the Pharisees. Now, as it happened, Jesus had healed the man on a Sabbath. The Pharisees asked the man all about it, so he told them. He smoothed the mud over my eyes, and when it was washed away, I could see. This man, Jesus, is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. But how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. Then the Pharisees once again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, But what did he do? How did he heal you? Look, I told you once. Didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they cursed him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know anything about him. Why, that's very strange. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know anything about him. Well, God doesn't listen to sinners, but, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Never since the world began has anyone been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't do it. You were born in sin. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Because I would like to. You have seen him, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped Jesus. I have come to judge the world. I have come to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Then, at the proper time, Jesus and the twelve apostles sat down together at the table. I have looked forward to this hour with deep longing anxious to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat it again until it comes to fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks for it, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had thanked God for it, he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, 
given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This wine is the token of God's new covenant to save you. An agreement sealed with the blood I will pour out for you. But here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me. For I, the Son of Man, must die, since it is part of God's plan. But how terrible it will be for my betrayer. Then the disciples began to ask each other which of them would ever do such a thing, and they began to argue among themselves as to who would be the greatest in the coming kingdom. Jesus told them, In this world, the kings and great men order their people around, and yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, those who are the greatest should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Normally the master sits at the table and is served by his servants. But not here, for I am your servant. You have remained true to me in my time of trial. And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in that kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. Finally, they came to a place called the Skull. All three were crucified there, Jesus on the center cross, and the two criminals on either side. Father, forgive these people, because they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders laughed and scoffed. He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is God's chosen one, the Messiah. The soldiers mocked him too, by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A signboard was nailed to the cross above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. Don't you fear God, even when you are dying? We deserve to die for our evil deeds, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I assure you, today, you will be with me in paradise. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli! Eli! Lema sabachthani! Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine. Holding it 
up to him on a stick so he could drink. But the rest said, Leave him alone! Let's see whether Elijah will come and save him! Then, Jesus shouted out again, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hand. And he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. The earth shook. Rocks split apart. And tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead after Jesus' resurrection. They left the cemetery, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Early, on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to see the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Because an angel of the Lord came down. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid. I know you were looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has been raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly, and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and he is going ahead of you. To Galilee. You will see him there. Remember, I have told you. Mary was standing outside the tomb, crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Why are you crying? Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. Teacher! Don't cling to me, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers 
and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. <laughs>